yet another dumb, cringy video idea. So build a portfolio. That is what I recommend you do in security to get ahead. In today's video, I'm going to be overviewing a step-by-step -step generalized approach for how you can build a portfolio in security. So a security portfolio in the context of security careers is a set of qualifications, experiences, and skills that you can present to future prospects, employers, hiring managers, and your peers. There's no hardline definition on what a portfolio is or what it contains, but overall, why should you build a portfolio? Really, it's to start and consistently build new skill sets while also showcasing your work. A portfolio can be evidence of showing what you've done, your previous knowledge, and maybe perhaps where you're headed. In the era of thousands of job applicants, making yourself stand out is quite beneficial. Building a portfolio is one way that makes you stand out, stay accountable, and connect with others. Now, a security portfolio can consist of many different elements. And specifically, when I think of a security portfolio, I think of formal qualifications such as university degrees, master's degrees, maybe a set of security-related certifications, blogs, write-ups, research papers, conference talks, volunteer or uh, being a leader in communities, local meetups, clubs, whatever that is, open source tools such as creation of tools or merges into existing tools, and then you have side projects aka home labs, CTFs, things of that nature, and of course there's much more. Generalizing this down into three steps, here is how I would recommend you get started with building a security portfolio and starting out actually with step zero, which is a word on formal qualifications. So I compartmentalize a formal qualifications into three, uh, university degrees, master's degrees, and a set of certifications. Now, a portfolio typically centers around these sets of certifications or formal qualifications. Um, if you're pursuing one of those three right now, what I recommend you do is follow to completion, put in the effort when it makes sense, and um, don't let the other distractions interrupt your goal. Uh, typically, those formal qualifications are the center. It's, it's the root. And then what you can do is you can build out other areas of your portfolio. Getting a formal qualification is a good baseline as it shows that you're willing to put in the work. Uh, you may learn a lot, you may not learn anything, and depending on the type of degree, certification, its provider, it de really depends. The experience is nuanced. Which degree or certification should you pursue? This is not very helpful, but it really, it's just going to be up to you. It, it depends on your certain circumstance or situation, and know that there isn't one right exact way, although I will say that qualifications, formal qualifications, are typically the center of a security portfolio, so something in related related to the computer science, information technology, cybersecurity degree space, as well as sticking to the main security related certifications are going to be your best benefit. For me specifically, I've centered my, I guess, security portfolio around formal qualifications. And there's seasons of my life where that is what I do. Now it's certifications, but it was a university degree for four years. Transitioning into my three generalized steps here, this is what I would do and why I would do it. So starting out with step one, which is project-based learning, hands-on practical project-based learning. It doesn't matter whether you are thinking about enrolling or have completed or won't complete any of those formal qualifications like I've talked about. Um, you know, having a formal or custom learning plan, whatever that may be, whether it's following a degree, sort of curriculum, or just, you know, you're interested in Docker, for example, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's something that you're learning while you're pursuing a certification, a degree, a domain of security, it really doesn't matter. Just stay curious. And for me personally, I really enjoyed building out various different types of virtual lab environments through virtual machines and cloud instances and just being very curious. For example, I've looked into malware analysis, threat hunting and engineering, uh, secure programming, um, you know, doing threat detections engineering. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't have to be large, doesn't have to be formal. It can be something as simple as starting a small script and connecting two VMs together and perhaps attacking one of them. It really does not matter. Uh, whatever it is, the important goal is to stay curious while you are conducting research, reading the security news or reading a book. And there's something that's like, hmm, that's the seems interesting to me, go look it up on Google and try to maybe create or expand upon maybe that one specific concept into that domain and create some sort of lab environment. Project-based learning allows you to apply what you're learning from a textbook into real world, 
those skills are transferable and it, it, it it's what I recommend it's it's the real world and it's quite fun so it's project-based learning so you're learning about project-based learning based off of what you're learning and the projects you are doing I recommend building a dedicated website whether that's a blog uh, using a third-party platform such as medium or substack or using github pages it really doesn't matter right now I'm using github to uh, document some of my projects I've used my website in the past um, and the overall topics or articles don't have to be anything very sophisticated. Um, the blog could be just a step-by-step -step overview of how the activity you did, or the, an overview of a script that you wrote, or a write-up on a CTF, or even some career-based anecdotes, what you're learning while you're pursuing a career. Um, and ultimately, why do I recommend you do this? Three main reasons. By writing down your thoughts, you're capturing what you've done, while able to construct articulate ideas based off of your disparate actions. Um, and this really in helps improve both your verbal and written communication or expression skills. And if you go look at 95% of job postings out there, security related, they're gonna have something like excellent skills in verbal and written communication. And that's something to definitely not undermine while you are developing or going into a career in security. Reason two is you're showcasing your ability to learn on your own and articulate your own thoughts. You're putting in that extra work. And number three is you're helping others in the community. And perhaps you're helping yourself while you're teaching yourself how to uh, articulate thoughts. You're helping others in the community. You're paying the knowledge forward. And for yourself, if you forget, blogs are always very helpful. If you're looking for a good example uh, or template of how you should build your security-based blog, this is a blog I followed for some time now called Hold My Beer Security. Um, this is an uh, individual who has posted all kinds of really cool step-by-step -step guides with projects that he has been uh, doing. And I really like what he has with the About Me page where it actually shows like what he's done. Um, so this is a great template website of how I would structure a security-based blog if you're looking for an example. While you are doing project-based learning, writing up those blogs, I recommend you continue or start to reach out, attend, and stay connected in the InfoSec community. Now, this can be with your fellow coworkers, your students, local or virtual communities such as Discord servers, it doesn't matter. A portion of your portfolio should absolutely be connecting with others. Now, this may not seem obvious as it's not something you can objectively point to, like say during an interview, but it's very important. And it's certainly something that I should improve on myself. Connecting with others helps you stay accountable, learn to grow your verbal communication skills, communicate ideas, share experiences, and connect with just really cool people. And perhaps maybe an opportunity one day arises where you're able to work with a, an associate, acquaintance, or even your friend because they have a community or a company that is hiring for a particular position. You really never know. And so a, a portfolio uh, centered around connecting or connection with the local community is, I think, something that I would like to improve on myself and is actually really, really important. All right, so a very generalized overview of building a portfolio. I realize that it's not like a step-by-step -step action, but these are some of the anecdotes, some of the lessons that I've learned so far. And the, the building a portfolio is one way that I think that you can quote unquote get ahead of other applicants if you are looking for a security based career. So this is what I've done in the past and what I'm trying to continue to do. And uh, hopefully maybe you've learned something new. So dumb video cringy ideas, are they helpful? I don't really know, it's just classic crap, but uh, hopefully this has been helpful in today's video and you know what it is. Until the next time, have a good day.